Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. He's looking for some people. Let's do this. I hear Ephesians chapter 4. Let's do that before I get started. I, we don't have a scripture up on that yet. But Ephesians chapter 4, let's look at something here. God wants us to understand this principle, which is a powerful principle. And we know the verse of scripture 4 and 11. The Bible tells us, the word of God tells us that he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. We know that these are gifts that God are offices that God has given to the people in the the saints of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has given that to us. Glory to God. Now, the purpose of that is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Why am I here tonight? I'm here tonight to perfect you for the work of the ministry so that you can edify the body of Christ. If there ever was a time that the body of Christ needed to be perfected, today is the day. We're finding that people are leaving the church, not going to church. We're finding that people are going to church and they're being discouraged, not encouraged. So I want to encourage you today to say to you, that first of all, you need to give your life over to Jesus Christ. And once Jesus comes into your life, then you have a responsibility to find someone that you can sit under to train you so that you can work in the ministry. Everybody say work in the ministry. ministry. Say it again, work in the ministry. You need to understand God didn't save you so you could sit. God saved you so you can do. Say that God didn't save me to sit. But God saved me to do. You see, you need to understand that you didn't, God didn't call you to sit. He called you to work. And one of the jobs you need to do is edify. Stop talking about the saints and start building them up. Stop talking about church people, but build them up. Man, how I've been in this all of my days. And like never before, we're hearing so many people talk about church people like, like they're the devil. You got friends in the world. You got friends who screw you up and down the neighborhood. But guess what? You don't talk as bad about them as you do church people and the preachers. Now, we talk about preachers as if they're not humans. They are humans and they do have faults like everybody. None of us are perfect. And and unfortunately, God's got to train some of us up while we're training you up. Mm, Let me say that again. God's got to train some of us up while he's training you up. My God, my God, my God. So you need to recognize and realize that God's hand is upon the preacher while he's training him. You need to give him some time and keep encouraging him till he fulfills the plan and the purpose of God for his life. Well, having said that, I want to talk from the book of Proverbs. I'm going to be on this subject for a while. I'm not trying to speed it up. Because the problem is, I don't want to give you a thrill on Blueberry Hill. I want to train you in the way you should go. Everybody say train. Train. Say it again. Train. I want to train you in the way you should go. And if in order to train you, that means we have to sit you down and continue to confess over you, continue to speak over you, continue to say over you what God is doing in your life. There often, there were many times in my early days, I needed someone to sit me down and to share with me what God was doing because my emotional state was so unstable, I needed to hear encouraging words all the time. But unfortunately, there were not that many people around me that would encourage me. For the most part, I was discouraged and not encouraged. And like the man of God in scripture, I had to learn how to encourage myself in the Lord. But do you not realize it is is very important that you understand that if you are going to move forward from this day forward, I need you to put a positive message in your mouth. I need you to understand that your mouth is filled with powerful words and you must watch what you say over people. You must watch what you say over people. Your words are eternal. And that is the reason why it is so necessary that you who are parents and you who are in church business, that you recognize and realize you need to watch what you speak over people's lives because what you say over them is what's fighting them all the time. 
And so you need to recognize and realize that you are responsible as a teacher in the kingdom of God to teach people the right way. Can I hear you say right way? Right way. Say it again, the right way. And so I want you to go into the book of Proverbs. I'm going to be here for a while because I think that if we're going to fix the problem we're facing today, yesterday in America, a 28, 27 year old young lady went into the school she used to go into, a Christian school, and she killed three kids and three adults. It's amazing. She grew up in the community, grew up in the school. Nobody knew she had an uh, uh, internal situation, an internal problem. She goes and buys seven uh, uh, guns, and she goes into the school and shoots the, the kids in the school and the teachers in the school. Something is wrong with us in America today. Why do we find it necessary to get a gun and to go into the community and shoot up? She went into the school. She went into the Christian school. She went into the church school. <clears throat> Did you get that? She went into the school. She went into a Christian school. And she went into the church school. Isn't that amazing? And the enemy that was inside of her uh, uh, did not stop her from doing what she did. And there was no one around to help her to get through the process that she was going through. May I say to you that we have a responsibility given to us as Christian people and as parents to train up our children in the way that they should go. Everybody say the way they should go. The way they should go. Here's the problem in America. We don't train our children. We send them to school. Hmm, let me say that again. We don't train our kids. We send them to school. And what we expect the school teacher to do is to be the parent. Well, let me say something to you. I'm grateful for the school system that we have in America, but the parents are not the teachers. The teachers are the teachers. And they're designed to teach academically. And rare do, rarely do we find that schools go in and teach kids morally. And because we do not teach our kids morally, then they don't have a, a conscience to understand what God is asking of them and what life is saying to them and how to make the right uh, life skills. They don't know how to be skillful when it's time to make a decision. I recall the days in the 80s when the Michael Jordans first came out. If you step on a brother pair of Jordan shoes, he wanted to fight you and even shoot you. I'll never forget coming up in school back a good while ago, one of my friends got shot in the back because he had a jacket on, a leather jacket, and the, the person who shot him wanted it. It's amazing we do not have the skills to understand how to get through the, the problems that we find ourselves in. So here we have the book of Proverbs, and I thank God for the book of Proverbs, and I thank God for the wisdom. Now, Proverbs is not for dumb people. Proverbs is not for foolish people. Proverbs is not for lazy people. But when you study the book of Proverbs, you're going to have to ask God to give you some understanding. You're going to have to ask God to give you some wisdom. The Bible says in the book of James, if a man lack wisdom, he can ask of God who give it liberally and upbraid it not. We see the great king, Solomon, who did not have the wisdom of God, but God said, I'm going to give you wisdom because you didn't ask for all of the things that people normally ask for. Long life, kill your enemies, and a lot of wealth and money. So God says, I'm going to give you something. I am going to pour into you, download into you my wisdom. Why is that necessary? It is necessary because wisdom is the language of God. Everybody say with me, wisdom. Wisdom. is the language of God. Language. Say it again. Wisdom, Wisdom. is the language of God. Language. Now, let me say this to you so that you'll understand. I'm going to ask you to repeat what you said, because if I'm going to get you to understand it, I need you to repeat it. Did you get that? If you're going to train your children, you don't tell them one time. You have to tell them over. You have to repeat it. Oftentimes, I hear parents say, I'm not going to keep telling you the same thing. Well, parents, if you don't tell your children the same thing, they don't sink it down into their hearts. 
So it is, if you understand as a parent how to raise up children in the way they should go, you have to tell them more than once to do it. Oftentimes we tell our children to go do something and we think they understand what we're saying, but yet they do not understand simply because you've not educated them, you've not trained them, you've not taught them to understand what you're saying. You expect them to know what you're saying, and if they don't do it the way you want it done, then you're going to now scream and holler and argue and want to discipline them for no justifiable reason. And now the kid don't understand how and why would my parents holler, scream, discipline me, correct me when they've never trained me or taught me how to make a right decision. We need to understand as parents and as teachers that it is important that if we're going to be the effective leaders that God has called for so that we can train up people in our society. Our society is falling apart simply because we do not have the effective teachers teaching so that kids can learn. We do not have the effective leaders leading, <coughs> excuse me, so that uh, we can understand our role and responsibility. So I'm going to take you in the book of Proverbs because it is a book of wisdom. Now, let me say this to you. Wisdom is not like academics. Wisdom is from God. Wisdom comes from God. Everybody say wisdom comes from God. So my goal is to impart to you the mind of God. And my goal is also to impart to you the language of God, to interpret for you the language of God so that you might understand what God meant as opposed to what you believe. Did you get that? I want to impart to you what God meant as opposed to what you believe. If you don't have the wisdom of God and understand the language of God, then when you begin to apply the various portions of scripture into your life and you don't understand the language of what he means, you're thinking you're doing right, but then you're not doing right. You're doing right, but not righteous. You're doing good, but not righteous. You see, God says to seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And there's a right way in the eyesight of man, but I don't want you to look through the eyesight that God has given you physically. I want you to look at the eye through the eyesight that God gave you spiritually, through the eyes of your spiritual understanding. So I want to speak to your spirit man, not your physical man, not just your solical man. I want to go down on the inside of you and find the hidden man because the hidden man is dying of starvation. In some cases, he may just be dead, but I'm so grateful to God that I can give you resurrection life. Mm, lift your hands and tell God, thank you. If your spiritual man is dead, I'm going to give you resurrection life. And what your spiritual man need is a good dose of the word of God to revive it. So I want you to know, like Jesus in the book of John, chapter six, verse 63, he says this, the words that I speak are spirit. And life. I'm coming tonight to give you life. My God, I'm coming tonight to give you life. Let me say it again. I'm coming tonight to give you life because we are living in darkness <clears throat> and we're spiritually dead. Did you get that? We are living in darkness and we are what? Spiritually dead. We're alive in our emotions. We go to school. We get degrees. We can tell you what Plato said, but we can't tell you what Jesus said. <clears throat> oh, I see I'm going to be challenged tonight here. Let me drink a little of this water to clear my throat. One thing I'm not going to try to do is be something that I'm not. I'm gonna, we're going to take it to you like it is. You need to recognize and realize, my brothers and sisters, that you are spirit soul and body say that with me spirit soul, one more time <clears throat> spirit soul and body now i don't want you to say i'm body soul and spirit you are spirit soul and body you need to understand the most important part of you is the inner man did you get that the most important part of you is the inner man and the inner man has to be fed every single day not only must you feed the inner man every day, you must feed him all day. And the only thing that the inner man needs is the word of God. 
He doesn't need a book. That's your solical man. He doesn't need some uh, red beans and rice. That's your physical man. Your inner man needs what? <clears throat> the word of God. Say that with me. My inner man needs what? The word of God. Say it again. The, my inner man needs the word of God. So if you're going to be revived, you're going to have to begin to teach your inner man the word of God. And while you're teaching your inner man, have you ever read scripture in the word of God? And there are certain verses that jump out at you and feel alive. Well, I need you to become familiar with that verse of scripture. And I need you to say, man, that's my verse. And I want you to study that scripture. Not only do I want you to study, I want you to meditate it. Not only do I want you to meditate, I want you to remember it. What do I want you to do? To study it to meditate on it, and to remember it. Everybody say it again. Study, meditate, and remember. That's very important. If you're going to become a successful leader, and may I say this to you, you need to confess that scripture to yourself. You need to hear it. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. I want you to know, I say to myself, every day I'm healed by Jesus' stripes. I say to my body, I say to my mind that I'm healed by Jesus' stripes. I say to myself that I am the head and not the tail, that I am the above only and never beneath. There are scriptures that I have to repeat to myself. They don't go out of style because the words that I speak are spirit and life. Say that with me. The words that I speak and you need to speak the word of God. You need to speak the word of faith. The word of God is spirit and life. It will get the job done. Now, you're going to have to become acquainted with it to understand how to work it. You're going to have to uh, 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 understand how to use the word. And God, by his spirit, will quicken that word inside of you. And the word of faith, God says the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and bring back to your remembrance. But if you've never studied it, <clears throat> if you don't know it, if you don't read it, then how can it bring something back to you if there's nothing inside of you? So I need you to understand that the word of God has life. Everybody say the word of God has life. The word of God has life. Say it again. The word of God has life. Now, do you want to live or you want to die? Well, if you want to live, you're going to have to start eating the word of God. I believe I read somewhere where it says taste and see that the Lord is good. Let me say that again. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So if I could taste the word and I could see that it's good, then I need to apply it to my life. And you and I know the things that are good for us are the things we enjoy doing. Some of us enjoy sinning because you think it's good for you. But sin has a problem. It's going to kill you and give you and shorten your lifespan. And that is not why God called you to live. God wants you to live a long life because what God has for you is not going to just take place in your 20s and your 30s. Remember Moses who started out at, at 80. Remember uh, Abraham who started out at 75. God's not in a rush. And is not bound by time. Anybody listening to me? So you need to understand. So I want you to go into the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter one is my theme text today. And let's read at least three verses. These are three powerful verses. And I want to emphasize some words here. Proverbs chapter one. And, 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 and let's go to verse two. Let's start with verse two. Proverbs chapter one. Verse two, <clears throat> listen to what it says. What, what, verse two, to know, oh, right here. Okay, two, to know wisdom. I talked about that Sunday, but I want to talk about, everybody say this word, instruction. say it again. To know wisdom and instructions. Wow. If you're going to be effective in society today, you're going to need to understand instructions. Now, I know black people like to, to have uh, a message that, that emotionalize them, but I don't want to emotionalize you because it won't last. I want to get something inside of you. And in order to do that, 
I don't want to preach to you. I want to teach you. You see, most of us like to be thrilled. I'm not a thriller. 